2-0 Queeley, a perfect 1-0 for McColgan. This match was went to go on a couple of years back. It's here now at Bama 26. Let's go to Buddy R. John Johnson, RMC. Ladies and gentlemen, we get ready for three five-minute rounds in the professional welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man stands six feet tall and weighed in officially at 170 pounds. He has a flawless record of one win with no loss and no draws. Fighting out of Northern Ireland, he is Joe McColgan. And his opponent, Fighting out of the red corner, this man stands 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighed in officially at 168.8 pounds. He has a professional record of 8 wins with 2 losses and 0 draws. Fighting out of Dublin, Ireland, he is Peter the Showstopper Queeley. When the action begins, your referee in charge, Leon Roberts. So the bout is finally on, a nice smile between the two, but Joe McColgan, the name on a lot of people's lips at the moment, isn't he, Chris? A very highly touted prospect. And the camp feels this is the ideal moment for him to take on Queeley. Well, it's because Queeley himself feels he's on the cusp of really big things, and McColgan, who, as he said, took time out from his fight career to get his own personal career going. And you can see him already working the body there. That was a really key element of the map to victory against a guy like Quigley. You gotta slow him down. You gotta drain the cardio department, interrupt the breathing, because his movement and mobility is exceptional. Yes, and as we said, you cannot allow Queeley to get in that drive position where he dictates the pace of the whole fight. He loves to be in control. And subconsciously, you don't even realize he's let, you're letting him do it, but he does. Joe McColgan has certainly started in a different way to ask questions of Peter Queeley. And he's setting everything up off that jab, even if it's not intended to fully connect. It allows him to enter and, more importantly, make Queeley cover just like that. And then he'll rip with that softball right hand to the body. Stiff jab again, one, two, coming in from McColgan. Big body shot again as well. Oh, beautiful. Now, Peter Queeley felt that one. He felt the left hand to the midsection there, and that's why he's gone for that takedown. We've seen how strong he was against Nathan Jones. And looking there over there into the SBG corner, they were calling for that. They could see that Queeley was thrown into adversity with that ripping shot to the midsection. And that's why he tied up, Chris. Joe McColgan really got his attention there with those body shots. And as we saw before, if you allow him to, Peter Queeley, he busted against Nathan Jones, was so strong in the clinch, but he's having trouble here because Joe McColgan also knows how to use that height at the weight. Joe McColgan is really, really solid with the footwork and the placement, and more importantly, setting it up in a manner and fashion which seemed to throw Queeley off just a little bit from the outset. Well, that's the first time we saw this. As we saw last time, everything he tried worked. He had a solid game plan. He utilized it. Suddenly, Joe McColgan comes out and starts these bombs to the body right from the outset. And Queeley continues here to try and work for what may be an outside trip. You can see the fighting going on between Queeley's right leg and the left leg of McColgan. McColgan controlling very neatly there with an overhook on the left-hand side and trying to pummel in and force his right arm underneath Queeley's left. Now, Leon Roberts telling them he wants a bit more work here before he probably go to split them, but it's so hard for Peter Queeley to take Joe McColgan down here. And Queeley trying to reap that knee, trying to get his right leg behind it and pull the left leg of McColgan up and away, which would allow him to complete a takedown. Again, a very significant position here at Curry. Yes, and a lot of effort expended here by Peter Queeley to get where he wants to be. Leon Roberts coming closer now for the two, and Queeley, as you can see, the sweat pouring off his head here from the sheer effort right above our commentary position, Chris. And still, Joe McColgan is there holding him tight. He hasn't got him down. Do you hear that clear there above our commentary position? He said, you're not going to get me right down. And Leon's just told him, you know, cut out the chat. Big swing and a miss there from Queeley, nearly caught by McColgan. Look at that, McColgan is in the zone right now. And I think he smells 
what may be the beginning of the end if he can continue to get to that body. Well, as I said, the confidence is certainly there. He felt that his, this was his time to steal Peter Queeley's thunder, and he's done a good job so far on that little dialogue where he said, you're not going to take me down. Proving it, and for the first time we're seeing Peter Queeley have to think defensively in about and think about the other person's strategy. Normally, his strategy is the one that's enforced. He's on the back foot here, a strange situation for him. And more importantly, he does not have an escape route right now. Queeley is very comfortable of engaging and then disengaging, even on the retreat. If you look back at his track record, if you look at the tape, he's very difficult to box in and close down. Staggered slightly there, Joe McColgan's hand speed is, is very good, and his shot choice. There you go, the uppercut as Peter Queeley came in for the legs there. It's a dangerous tactic, but it worked again, and once again, he's against the fence with Peter Queeley really looking to, to catch his breath and assert himself. He hasn't been able to do this in the round, that's what's fascinated me, with 20 seconds to go. The Peter Queeley we've seen before hasn't had things his own way by any stretch. In fact, Joe McColgan has used that reach and height superbly. And more importantly, we have not seen this from Queeley in a long time. To close in and try and force his opponent to the mat, usually Queeley a lot more like water, letting things ebb and flow which really allows him, no matter what the opponent's game plan is, to control the action. But right now, that's McColgan's department. That was the thing that impressed me, Chris. If we look back at that round, the big thing was the way McColgan knew how to use those longer limbs, the body shots, then he'd bring it up, then he stopped Queedy taking it down. And it's not often you see the showstopper looking puzzled, but he did in that first round. Usually, from Queedy, we see a lot of those feints, a lot of different looks and tells, but McColgan able to get a very quick start and attack the body immediately within the first opening 60 seconds in devastating fashion. Really, I believe, has turned the tides of battle thus far. Well, the thing is, it's the mind games going on as well, and it's McColgan that's playing them. He knows Peter Queeney's reputation, he knows what he does. He's been taunting him physically, he's been told to stop taunting him a little bit verbally. And now as we take a look at some of the recovery there in between rounds, John Kavanaugh giving Queeley who we need to remind ourselves is one of Conor McGregor's sparring partners. A word of advice to try and make some changes here and turn things around against a surging Joe McColgan. McColgan jumps forward with it, and again, the mind game's going on. Both men saying it didn't hurt, opening their bodies, opening their hands, nice exchange of punches. Round two starts the way the first round ended. Nice uppercut there from Queeley. But a left hand counter as he came in from Joe McColgan, Chris. This is so well balanced. McColgan is exceptional here at knowing exactly when to advance and when not to. A little bit of a low blow there. Offsides play by McColgan. Acknowledged. What great sportsmanship here. And Leon Roberts will send Joe McColgan to the neutral corner as well along with Peter Queeley, and he'll have up to five minutes to recover here, Malcolm. Yes, Leon walking over to see him now. I, I don't think there's any malice in that whatsoever. McColgan was doing a good enough job without that. I think it was, it was purely unfortunate. And Peter Queeley won't make a fuss either. Consummate professional here. And I, I just feel in round two here, finely balanced. And we know the history to this. There's so much resting on this outcome. Peter Queeley looks to have regained control of the situation but also very wise to take full advantage of the time here. That's the experience, and, and, and rightly so. There's so much at stake here. It's not about pride, it's about that win. And as Leon just said to him, when you're ready there, a lot at stake. McColgan keeping Queeley in his sights. He has not taken his eyes off him for He's a moment. He's desperate to get going again, Chris. It's as simple as that. He wants that momentum to keep going. That's the key to... Fighting Peter Queeley is momentum, keeping the momentum up to stop that man's game plan because when Queeley gets into his game plan and his groove, he's so hard to beat, he grinds you down. McColgan getting a little bit more aggressive here, literally jumping into that rear teep. And that gave Queeley the opportunity for the takedown. He said in the first round, you're not going to take me down, and he's trying to prove it again, but as you said, when he jumped with that teep, it gave Queeley the perfect opportunity. And here we go. Back to his feet again. 
real test of strength here in these clinches. And we saw the effort in the first round from Peter Queeley in that clinch. And somewhat surprising given the fact that most of Queeley's ring time is in the upright. And here he is pressing to get things down to the canvas. I like a lot of the adjustments that Queeley has made to try and close the distance at the right time without running in anything significant, but he's been unable. Looking to reap that left leg, Chris, but again, that leg from McCulkin was always working to the thigh of Queeley as well. You said about the subtle things, both these men are doing that now. Queeley operating with some head pressure there. And right as McCulkin was trying to catch the pummel, it was a great strike from Quilly on the exit. Quilly with the 360 spinning wheel kick, shaking his head as Joe McColgan again switching up for that push kick. Oh, superbly balanced. And again, it was a direct response to the reverse side kick from McColgan to say, anything you can do, I can do better. And good tactics there from Quilly, chopping at the legs of McColgan. And look at Quilly's elbows drop there to try and cover up the breadbasket. Oh, the body shots, I feel, have been McColgan's most potent weapon, but those little chopping kicks are a good tactic from Queeley. When you've got a man as mobile as that, take that base away. That right hand finds the left-hand side of Queeley's body again, though. Stiff jab from McColgan. Queeley continues to circle towards the right hand of McColgan. Nice uppercut, the way he whips that up is... Truly stunning. Acknowledged by Peter Queeley, superb sportsmanship, and again, caught on the way in, Peter Queeley, by that jab. Then jumping knee forces Peter Queeley to go back and showboats as he goes back again. McColgan, he's not lacking confidence in this bout by any stretch of the imagination. Queeley looks a little bit more switched on now. I would have said the first half of this fight was less polished than we're used to seeing from Peter Queeley, but he's kicking a lot more cleanly now. And this is the sense of distance that makes him truly masterful. He's just within striking reach, just within kicking distance, but not too close to get clipped by McColgan. I think he's a great tactic as well, chopping at the legs. McColgan's proved to be so mobile, so athletic. You chop at the tree, at the base there, and again, this time he goes once more for the takedown. McColgan desperate once again to prove his point, and then the downward striking elbows. And right now, continuing to try and land those elbows, Side of the head now as well, Chris. Dangerous times for Peter Queeley as he hangs on here for the takedown. And Queeley was committed to a head inside takedown. Usually the smarter way to go. When your head is outside, you can be very vulnerable to chokes, a guillotine, for example. The danger of head inside is that you can be punished by your opponent's opposite hand or elbow in this case. Yes, Peter Queeley's face showing the damage now of this bout and still not being taken down by Peter Queeley. And this is the key, I feel, to this game plan of McColgan. Queeley, though, really working here for this takedown. Well, he's under a minute now to be able to do it, Chris, and for two rounds it seems that McColgan has made good his claim here that you will not take me to the campus. And what a beautiful turn, and then straight back. And McColgan so fast to capitalise on fast, fast hands. Peter Queeley showing all his experience in moving away, but a big finish from Joe McColgan, and he's still coming in strongly. And Queeley bloodied up as McColgan probes onwards with those punches and kicks. You can see the sweat fly off Queeley's midsection from that blocked kick attempt from McColgan. McColgan really throwing in the power now, but it's the end of the round. Well, Chris, fascinating two rounds, and as that second round went on, Joe McColgan said not only would Queeley not take him down, but what a way to capitalise on the attempt. He's looking so confident, he's looking so strong, and Peter Queeley, for the first time, is finding real difficulty really cementing himself in this back and, and taking that power that we normally see, as he did to Nathan Jones, and converting it to offence. We haven't seen the real offence we know Queeley's capable of, and that's because of McColgan. Just a little bit halfway through that round, just over the midpoint, I would say Queeley, though, began to behave a little bit more like we're usual to seeing. The distance was there for some of the kicks. He was throwing some good chopping attacks to try and slow down McColgan, as you pointed out. And that was certainly a little bit more of the right wind in the sails for the SBG camp. Will they be able to keep it up? It's round three happening now here at Dublin's Three Arena, but McColgan showing some early aces with those body shots, as well as some of those flying knees and kicks. 
So both men have shown their poison. And there's just five more minutes on the clock. It's round three. There's so much at stake here with the pre-fight comments. And McColgan so far able to back it up. But this is like Peter Quigley rocks Joe McColgan then. Starts fast, fast hands himself through, reminds Joe McColgan what a good boxer he is himself. That was a beautiful combination, Chris. So smooth. There's nothing labored about the way he strikes. Look at the hand fighting. Beautiful stuff from Peter Queeley. Pairing that hand and then sneaking with that uppercut right up underneath the guard. And if McColgan's arms or elbows are a little bit too wide, that can be the end very quickly. McColgan attack on the body. Both fighters finding success he just fainted. 40 seconds in. He fainted with the leg kick and then went for the body shot again. But Queeley's reminded him, you can't take anything for granted. He's on a roll himself. He's experienced. He feels that the time is now for him to be recognized. We know he said, I deserve respect now. And I think he earned it in that opening exchange from Joe McColgan. Left to the body, left upstairs for Queeley, but then it's the power right uppercut again. That's been his best strike of the round thus far. For the first time in the bout, though, Chris, Joe McCogan open mouth here, feeling the pace, I feel. And another kick attempt from McCogan, a little bit lazy. There could be a penalty here if Queeley can secure the takedown. Good weight distribution here from McCogan to try and spread things out and disallow Queeley from getting this one down to the mat. Well, the thing is, Queeley is the master of going the distance. He can grind out the wins. You know he's going to be as strong at the end of round three as well. And the signs here, he really is trying to turn up the pace on Joel McCogan. There it is, there's the proof. Queeley, ten fights, goes the distance, grinds it out. Now we'll see what Joe McCogan's got. Beautiful stuff of picking his man up and dumping him down. But an even better job here from McColgan of scooting up to the wire. And from here trying to work a stand-up. He's talking to his corner right now. And look for him to try and stuff Queeley's head. The problem is, though, Queeley controls his hips. And he'll suck them away and pull him backwards. And now Joel locking up. Yes, looking to lock him up, time up there. But this is what we expected from Peter Queeley right the way through the full round. Such stamina. He's used to grinding out, he's used to being in this position. And he's done an exceptional job of recovering from those early body shots. I mean, those really take it out of you, and it took him a little bit of time to get back on the bike and get moving again, but he's looking very good here, and looking certainly to have improved his position to gain an advantage here in the third, over halfway through the round. Yes, yeah, still a long way to go and a good position here for Peter Queely. It's what he can do with it now, I feel. A big third round by Peter Queeley will really give the judges something to think about here. Peter controlling here, trying to work the pass. And it seems every single time that McColgan opens his guard, Queeley works to try and improve his position. You saw for a moment McColgan thinking about the hip bump sweep, but then having to lock his legs back up. And this is where we're seeing the true strength of Peter Queeley now, Chris. The timing was perfect, halfway through the... Well, just over halfway, under halfway through the round. Takes his man down and starts to work him. But I think this is a great job by Leon Roberts to let these two men work. This is effective mixed martial arts. And he gave Queeley a good opportunity to work the pass there. Sometimes grappling is much like an iceberg. Slow and powerful. So now McColgan back to his feet, but you can see what Queeley wants. He wants him back down there. He wants him back on the canvas. And you've got to think, how much has Joe McColgan got left in the tank now, Chris? As I said, Queeley does three rounds in his sleep. He's capable of this. He's capable of going right to the finish. And the finish is coming now. It's a minute left. Is this enough from Peter Queeley to take this now? Well, you say that, but he had to work really hard for that takedown. But he gets it again. Second time in a row here. That takes a whole lot of energy. Both men having expended a ton of it here. Locking up again, full guard is McColgan. Not much time on the clock. This has been huge for Peter Queeley. That's right. We felt he needed it. I mean, McColgan asked him so many questions that we weren't expecting. And then the key point in the round, after an attempt from McColgan, Queeley forged forward. Big, big takedown. And a second one. He's looking at his own corner now, posturing up. And this is vital as we go into the last 20 seconds of this third round. So much at stake for these two men. Both men continue to duke it out here on the canvas. 
But it's Queeley who has been able to retain top control for a significant portion of this round and impose his will in doing so. Well, this is going to go to the judges, and let's see what they say. This is on a knife edge. Queeley raises hands first. Over three rounds. Let's see which man has got this. Oh, my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, all three judges scored about 29-28 to your winner by unanimous decision. Joe McCaldan! Ladies and gentlemen, I have with me your winner, Joe McColgan. Joe, come here. Now, you said you would win. You said you would steal the thunder. But boy, was that a tough bang. Yeah, that was tough. Let me just say, I only have a record of 3-0. and oh. My first pro fight, I took on a guy that all of Ireland were scared of, and Tom Hogan, and I finished in the third. Then, in my second fight, I take out the number one welterweight in the country, a pro. Give me your Artem Lobov in UFC, Belfast. And I'll take out the fourth SPG member. Joe, you said this would instantly catapult you into the spotlight. I feel you've done that now. You must be so pleased with this result. But can I just say, it felt like the third round was a bit dangerous. You put so much into the first two. Yeah, Peter hit me one really good shot, flashed me over here. There's no way I ain't going down. There's no way I'm quitting in there. And every time he had me against the cage, I was using that as an opportunity to recover and to capitalize on something, like a mistake that he would make. Uh, and in the third there, he got me down. And let me tell you, it's, it's very hard to get me down. So fair play to him in the third to do that. Joe, that said, this is a huge scalp. Where to next for you now? This isn't a huge scalp for me or my team. We know exactly what I can do. Just the civilians don't know what I can do. But Everyone kind of said to me, well, he's want to know what's he doing fighting Peter Quilly. We know what we were doing. You've seen how confident I was yesterday. And that shows, I've showed it there. And I've shown everyone here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, he said it, he did it. Joe